gone from massive teeth to now eight legs so it's all about the appendages this morning and you can see our spider is just in there now a tropical tent web spider oh sorry is very difficult to actually point out because they've got so such an intricate web it's almost impossible to get to where that spider is without touching some sort of a strand they kind of come off in all directions and the main sort of structure is in the middle but then you've got these sort of webs on top here and down at the bottom that are all anchor lines and this will be where this the, the spider will move around but it will use this sort of flattened part here to catch its prey now the reason why it has this sort of structure and design is because things that are sitting in the grass so as I'm walking around and there's things in the grass so what's going to happen is it's going to get disturbed and something will always fly but when it flies or jumps it generally goes in an upward direction now it makes a lot of sense if your web is facing sort of over the top because as something then jumps it jumps straight into this web as you can see by that sort of thickened or area where it looks like some sort of prey animal I'm going to try to get a piece of grass in over there so that's where something has jumped in from the bottom and has been caught up and then been wrapped up by the spider now you'll notice there's a central sort of area see look at how sensitive she is to the, the web as I touched it with a piece of grass she came running in to see if it was a prey item I'm sorry girl I didn't mean to do that to you but it was just wanted to try and point out the prey items but you can see how adept they are to feeling vibration around the sensitive part of the web if I touch any of the anchor lines she doesn't respond to that because she knows that that's not something that she can respond to because it's not going to stick there the prey species won't stick in that area but as soon as you touch any of these sticky sort of viscous parts of the web so that spider will come rushing in to try and grab whatever it is now this area in the middle that you see is a thickened area of web that's where her egg cases will be so she'll lay eggs inside there and her spiders will then hatch from over there so that's the sort of larval area or the egg area and then the rest of the web is for predatory things now that's pretty cool and also what I've spotted now is Seb do you see the spider here on the left sorry this is we're in a monkey orange th and it's just grabbing everything but there's a tiny 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 spider that is crawling towards that egg case I don't know if you can see it over there so it's tiny 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 it almost looks like a sort of silver dot on underneath that sort of thickened area I don't know if you can see it now Point, I mean, put the stick so I'm trying to there it is there yeah, so I, I've got it yeah. there we go okay so Seb has found it now that is called a mercury dewdrop spider now interestingly enough these dewdrop spiders generally are on the webs of orb web spiders they don't typically spend too much time on a tent web spider like this and in fact it's actually the first one that I've seen on a tent web so these guys are kleptomaniacs they will actually go after the food source that this tent web spider has gotten so after the tentrip spider has wrapped up that food and injected its venom because the dewdrop spider's venom is so small or its glands are so small it can't inject venom into big prey items and actually find the food that it needs and so what it does is it basically waits for the venom to take effect from the bigger spider and waits for it all to be wrapped up after that it will then quickly shoot in feed off it and then get out now the interesting thing is is the reason why it's able to do that is because of its microscopic size now say it's going to be almost impossible to find it again but it's on the edge there it's so so small that it's very difficult to keep it in camera so don't worry Seb it's okay it's kind of gone into that thicker area anyway and as they sort of head towards the the prey thing that the, the that the tent web spider has you'll find that dewdrop spider is so small that it actually doesn't trigger the vibrations enough to cause the spider to come rushing in and kill it and that's how they can get away with feeding but isn't the spider cool now she's come right out into the sunlight she's very pretty she's got these kind of protrusions Wow, very, very, very cool. It's not always about the big animals out here. Sometimes things like this, and I know spiders always have negative connotations, but they amaze me. They are in such incredible engineers by being able to build these sort of intricate webs and being able to move around and actually find the prey items that they need and set up these sort of engineering marvels out here in the bush absolutely is fascinating. And the fact that this web actually takes nutrients away from them, because remember the web is a protein-based substance, so it's, it's basically they give some of their their food to be able to catch their food and that amazes me and astounds me so spiders for me are one of the most incredible predators we have out here right we're going to carry on Jamie I believe had some alarm calls so I'm going to try 
I'm going to try and sort of head down towards that area around Treehouse Dam, see if we can't give Jamie a hand and find out what was going on. Now, Anna, you're asking what eats the parasitic mites. Now, I'm not sure, are we talking about on spiders or are we talking about on just general animals altogether? Because there's obviously different animals have different ways of dealing with it, but in the sort of... Uh, so you talk... Ah, so you're referring, Anna, to the dewdrop spider. Will the big adult spider, the tent rib spider, feed off that dewdrop spider? Well, Anna, no. And the, and the reason why is because that dewdrop spider is so little that it doesn't actually cause any sort of vibration on the web. And so the, the, the big tent rib spider can't actually see that there is that spider there, and it doesn't feel that the spider is there. So it doesn't know that there is a prey source. If that spider was bigger and it potentially vibrated that web, then yes, it would definitely rush in and inject venom and will sort of cannibalize that that um well not cannibalize but eat that um other spider and you'll find it with some spiders they do eat other spiders it's not an uncommon thing we found a web the other day where we had legs of an orb web so it does happen right as i was saying we're going to try and head down to an area where jamie had alarm calls of kudu she's still with the hyena den so let's go across to her and get an overload of cuteness